Thank you. You may be seated. Um, he took upon himself with me and my brother. Uh, we're, we're those that uh, spread a lot of joy, a lot of music, a lot of laughter, um, a lot of trips. And so I want to talk a little bit about those. Um, and then I'll ask Johanna or anybody else who wants to say a few things. Um, I have no regrets, but I have wished that I had a little bit more time to have some conversation with my father. Um, his love for the Marine Corps bled over to me, and, and it's the first time I've received a flag. I'm, I'm usually the one who presents flags to family members. I've been in charge of the Honor Guard for the Forest Service for, gosh, 20 years now, and I've done a lot of those, so it's kind of surreal to have somebody give me a flag. Um, but what an honor to be able to have it um, from, you know, the core. Uh, and all that goes along with it. I mean, I remember him on Sundays. Every Sunday, every weekend was filled full of music in the house. And it, it would be anything from classical music um, to a lot of salsa, gumbia, and all kinds of dance music. And, and we had a piano, and he had his congas there. And every morning, you know, he would be playing. And he would be doing yard work, but he was playing music, so it was good for him. Um, a smart man. Um, we would play Trivial Pursuit, and he would just wipe everybody off the table. If, uh, if whenever he watched Jeopardy, he would answer the questions before even the con contestants had, had answered those questions. It was pretty awesome. Um, his love for aircraft and, and taking us as children to the air shows all the time was just one of those things I truly, truly remember. Um, being able to go up to trips, uh, uh, whether it be Malibu or, or certain things, uh, and, and you'd see some of the things, that the scars that war leaves um, on an individual. Um, going for a hike and into the bushes, it was kind of jungly, and he just said, I can't do it. And so there was those kinds of things that are really true to my heart, you know, having gone through a war myself and, and, and knowing what he was going through, but not knowing at the time, and appreciating it after. Um, his friendships with all of his other fellow um, comrades in arms who, you know, in the helicopter community was, was that of great uh, revered to him, and, and it was just one of those things where he just really loved that, that part of it. Um, I wish, uh, like I said, I wish I had a, some more conversation with him, more time to be able to, to talk about life and talk about how uh, much I appreciated, you know, his time with me and, and, and everything. Um, it's hard, it's, uh, change, change is hard and, and loss is hard. And I understand that from um, years of experience with critical stress management and you know, delivering and taking care of my folks that, that do the honor stuff and I know it's hard on all on us all so um, you know I again I just wish I just had a little more time with him and then did his uh, tour overseas in Southeast Asia and Vietnam um, for, um, in between uh, 66 and 67 and we didn't know this I mean it's it's not something you know we would talk about stuff but he would just talk about the aircraft we never really talked about combat or anything like that. I don't talk about that to my children either when we talk about the Marine Corps. But, you know, it's just one of those things where I didn't know what he did until I got the package of his records. And I'm looking at, you know, he had, I know he had a, he had a B on his Navy commendation, but I didn't know what it was. So I read the citation, and his act of valor, and that's what the B stands for, is he put the helicopter, the pilot put him between the, the mission they were on was to go extract um, injured, uh, wounded uh, Marines. And the helicopter used the support of this transport helicopter and bringing an attack helicopter around. And as he did, um, they realized that the landing zone that that helicopter had to land was between the NBA and the Marines, and they had to land between them. So there was a constant barrage of fire. So he had to put himself in between them and laid down suppression fire while taking fire that whole time that they had saved all those Marines. So, whew, that's pretty, pretty good stuff coming you know, from a Marine. So, it's hard. 
dark to raw. But I'm so proud of the things he did during that time. Yeah. <sighs> so I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> Um, but again, the music was, was always uh, so powerful. I mean, like you said, it was, it was eclectic. I mean, there was stuff that he would, you know, I, I, I came across it that, you know, I never, you know, I have all of his music. I mean, that's stacks and stacks of CDs. So if there's something that you guys want, <laughs> let me know. If there's something that's missing, say, hey, look for that and see if we have it in it. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we went through it, and I'm holding on to all that music because I just, I just love it. And it reminds me of, uh, you know, even victory at sea early in the morning when you'd wake us up and, and stuff. But uh, <laughs> that loss a thief of magnitude. He stole my heart when I was 15, and he put this ring on my hand at that time, and. Our relationship is like, I've told Marilyn, between the movies of Brigadoon and The Magic Cottage. Brigadoon is a story about a little Scottish town that goes to sleep at night one date, wakes up the very next morning, but a hundred years later. But those 100 years don't exist for them. That's kind of how it was when I contacted Vic in July, excuse me, August of 2019. The 50 some odd years that had passed just disappeared. It was the very next day for us and it was the quickest connection ever. Someone asked me if we reconnected, I said, I don't think there was ever a disconnection between us. I'm glad that I was able to give him some sense of purpose and joy the last almost three years of his life and as Eric said music we were both music so there was music always and his love of music was eclectic from Mozart to Mambo I mean you name it it was there and his love of Core. I learned more about the Marine Corps in the last two and a half years than I have in my entire life. If I asked him one little question through watching a movie, that meant there's another 15 to 20 minutes of a session of all kinds of information. I accidentally picked up something that was really pretty in one of the PXs that we went to, and I said, look at this, honey, isn't this pretty? And he's giving me this scowl. I don't know why. But just answer me, don't you think it's pretty? And he's still looking at me. And then I noticed, oh, it's Army. So I <laughs> and I, I looked around and I, I picked up the one and only Marine Corps and I went, he goes, that's real nice, I like that. <laughs> so obviously if it wasn't a Marine, it wasn't anything. So that's when people say he was a soldier, but he was a Marine. I was corrected. But um, at the end, he was a happy man. And I truly wish there was more time to mend the rips in his life because he wanted to do that. He was truly wanting to be a much happier, a much more fulfilled man. So, um, I can't believe I got this far. But, um, anyway, I'm glad you guys could be here and we could say goodbye to someone we loved because he still has my heart. And I think he will always have it. And he will be missed and loved. He was more like a brother. And I think uh, my sister felt the same way. We'd argue and uh, then we'd make up. But we grew up in New York and the family living in the same building or next door or downstairs. So a week didn't go by when we weren't in somebody's house. We always saw each other more than once. 
and uh, Victor was watching his favorite program, Victory at Sea. <laughs> and he, I couldn't get near it. He says, why are you getting so near? Don't take it off. I'm not taking it off. And then there's the argument. I just want to see what, what you got, you know, she was so glued to. But uh, the thing that, I, that stands out a lot with Victor was when he went to Pendleton. Because we'd go out and visit him, and he gave us a tour. And to this day, I don't know if another Marine can tell me that the women were not allowed in the hangar. He took my husband, and he, and he said, no, women are not allowed. I don't know if it was one of Victor's things, or that's the truth. So to this day, I don't know why women were not allowed. But at least we got a tour of um, Pendleton. And, uh, we also um, picked him up when he came from Vietnam. And when he stayed at the house, he was, you know, very nervous, and he slept for two days. And I will never forget that. And he became, uh, you know, and he went everywhere with us. And uh, it was, it was really warm, uh, heartwarming to have him at the house. Because he was funny, he made us laugh all the time. He, was, he could also imitate, imitate a lot of actors. So he was very bright, you know. So he's somebody you can't forget, ever. And I, and I always love him like a brother. And uh, with, all, with all of our faults, because we all have faults, and we have to learn how to forgive. It's important before we leave this world that we have to forgive, it's important. So I thank Victor, I miss him, and I love him. I know we all love him. And we all make mistakes, and all we can do is ask for forgiveness and be forgiven, um, which I've done. And, uh, but I wish I could tell him, you know, hey, I mean, he knows I, I love him, you know. He knows that I appreciate all of the time he spent. He didn't have to take me. I mean, I got, um, he met my mom. I, I was seven years old, and he wanted to adopt me, and I'm thinking, great, you know, it was cool. And so I was really proud of that moment that we were able to, you know, have, have you know, it went from a, a name that was uncommon to a very common name, but, <laughs> but you know, I didn't care. It was, it was really a joyous time, and just fond memories of a, a lot of good, good time together. And, uh, and then, you know, we'd go over to his, his grandmother's house, and she would make black beans and rice. And I would sit there and she would just pile it on and I would eat it all. <laughs> all that Cuban infused food was just always oh, delicious. And she was like, going, going over there? Yeah. She could make some black beans and white rice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of good times. All the experiences that you guys have all lived with uh, Victor. But I will say, he makes an impression immediately for the rest of his life when he does meet you. And so, um, actually, when Peggy was saying that uh, he had lived with her for a little bit when he got out of the service, um, then he came and he lived with us for a year. And we really got to know him. And the thing that was so wonderful that I will always, always remember with him is that no matter who we had over, he always had that little look when he would stir the pot with everybody and pull them in to his way of really getting them irritated because he was a very factual guy. And he would poke the bear, and he and I would look across the room to each other, and I knew exactly where he was coming from. Now, he always poked me in the beginning because I didn't know the game that he was doing. But once I got used to that, it was a pleasure when we would have family over to watch him start getting it going. And everybody <laughs> would jump on board and he would look at me and I would look at him and he always had that little smile smirk and he would shake his head like this. And it was like, we would go, yeah, you did it again, you know? And he just did have the kindest heart he had it guarded for many reasons with you know, his past and his military uh, experiences, which he did share with Joe and I, uh, which was fabulous. I mean, we would like 
just be listening to some of his stories that he would share with us. And yeah, you're right. You are scarred forever. And um, the ones that really do survive are the military veterans that come back and have to live with that forever. You know, so I just wanted to share that because he always knew how to play the game very well. And then when everybody would leave, he and I would just chuckle. You know, and I'd say, you did it again. He goes, I know. <laughs>